It started off a little slow, but uh, we kicked into gear there after that you know, first quarter, really got it rolling. Um, Proud of our guys playing a complete game. We, we felt like it was going to be a physical game. It was physical early. Those three and outs uh, early on on offense really hurt us, right? Didn't get a lot of possessions. Uh, you know, they did a good job of controlling the clock, but I thought our guys responded. We just had to get through that lull to start. Um, you know, took care of some penalties. Um, were able to, you know, it, it, early they were able to get some runs. They got a lot of runs early in the game. Um, you know, QB runs, something we knew that we were going to see. They took advantage of it and were, were uh, doing a good job with that early, but I think we shut that down later on in the game. And uh, overall, I thought our players came to perform today. Questions? James? Yeah, you think you didn't take away your asset. I'm not even sure how much they've been targeted for the pass. So, who deserves the most credit for taking away their, their main option? You know, I mean, I think our guys just had heightened awareness all day. And there was a couple times I thought he was running free that we didn't cover him great. Uh, but the pressure combined with the coverage, I think, you know, equaled them not being able to get him the ball. So we knew 84. I mean, he's a hell of a player. He's one of the best we'll see in this conference, one of the best we'll face all year. And if we, we knew if we handled that and quarterback runs, we'd be in a good good position. Matt, in the back. What was the difference between the halves and the starts? You referenced a slow start. It wasn't that the case in the second half. What was the difference? Yeah, I think ultimately we, we were kind of hurting ourselves. We were playing behind the chains a little bit on offense. We weren't having as efficient runs. I thought our coaches made some good uh, adjustments in the second half about what runs we liked. They had some good, they did some schematic changeups early in the game too. Uh, stuff we hadn't seen from them before. We had to adapt to that and be able to, you know, adjust our call sheet um, based on that. And then our, our players just knew it was going to be a long haul. A long haul. We've talked about winning the fourth quarter. You know, we won the fourth quarter. Today. We didn't win it last week, you know. Um, just all those pieces added together, I think it came together at the end for us. Eric on the left. Both seems really settle in after the first couple of drives. What did you see from him and just the offense turning the page after the first couple? Yeah, I thought he showed patience, right? I mean, you, if you go in there forcing it, like I said, they, they pitched a couple different looks at us. And then when we came out in the second half, they really played the defense they've been playing all year, right? Once they got back to what they've done all year, we had some really good answers for it. And um, they got out of some of the funkier stuff they were doing early on. Jared? What do you see from Nico? Didn't start, but gets into the game as a big PDU on fourth down. That's what you see from him. Yeah, well, that's what we talk about when we say strength in numbers, right? Like, the, we have a guy that's up, ready to play. He's a really quality player, and, you know, he competed on some um, some tough throws today and was able to be able to play physical, uh, had a good blitz at the end there, was able to get in uh, on a third down. So exactly what I expected from him, right? We brought him here for a purpose, and he did a great job. James on the left. It's another 100-yard day for Troy. Again, every defense knows they have to try to take him away, and very few are very successful this season. So what is it about him that he's just able to continue doing this work? Well, I think our, our coaches, one, do a good job of finding ways to move him around to where we can find matchups. You know, I think our court, quarterback has a heightened awareness to where he's at, and we have a chance to get it to him. We want to. And then he does a good job finding the ball in the air. I mean, he adjusts to the ball really well. Uh, certainly, he's a strength of our team. But what's great is we have other strengths around him, so you can't just dedicate all your time to one player because there's some other players that are going to hurt you on the field if you do that. Chris, all right. I know you just right out of the game, but just maybe review the 5 0 start. Now you're going into the bye week and kind of how that feels, and maybe will you be able to settle down and do this this coming week? Yeah, we're not going into the bye week, we're going into work week. Right? Uh, our guys know what our goals are, what we have to accomplish, right? And then, you know, a lot of their teams are going to relax this week, we're going to get better, right? And, uh, you know, we start exactly how we expect to start, right? But we're about to go play a real opponent there. Those, those guys are playing good ball up north, so uh, we got to bring our best. It's got to be one of our great preparations. We got some really tough teams down the road. So we got to continue to build our and play our best ball moving forward. Eric? I, I know it ended with a missed field goal with the last 40 seconds in the first half of the execution going down the field with one timeout. What, what stood out there? And just, I guess that speaks to what both can do. In, in yeah, you know, I think our guys had, knew exactly what we were trying to accomplish. I probably could have called that timeout a little bit earlier. You know, I let like 10 seconds run off the clock there, but you're trying to make a decision. Are they going to go for it or not? Once you figured out that they, they're probably not going to go for it, that's one where um, I could have called that timeout just a little bit earlier. Uh, but our guys understood the situation, understood the time of the clock. I mean, to be able to run the ball at the very end there to get it within a uh, field goal kick position there and call a timeout, I mean, I think that's really smart. Bucky going down instead of fighting for extra yards. I th we talk about being the smartest team in college football, and those are the situations we've got to be a lead at. And, you know, Cameron's going to make that kick, you know, 9 out of 10 times, you know, 99 out of 100 times. It didn't happen today. That's all right. We're trained for it now. James. Like Kyrie had a little bit of a left hip issue there and left and come back in and both of them played very early, but then got enough hands. Just what's their status? What's their uh... yeah? I don't, I don't completely know yet. We'll have to you know get with medical staff and figure out exactly where they're at. You know, like I said, strength and numbers showed up today. We had some other guys who could go in there and contribute. Right here in the middle. What did you see out of Jordan James, especially on that uh, drive where he scored a touchdown? Well, I love running backs that look for contact. 
Right, I love running backs that don't look to just run out of bounds. And Jordan James, when he touches the ball, he looks to score. So he ran hard. Um, he's a physical runner. He's you know he's proven he can get north and south. I thought he did a good job of that today. Matt, you back. You said, you said Monday, bring your own juice kind of type of a game. How do you feel like you guys did? And what do you make of the crowd that was here? That was pretty pro worthy. Yeah, you know I'm so grateful to to our fans. You know, it felt like a home game in a lot of ways with the juice that we had from our crowd. You know. When they travel like that, you know, that makes it a special environment for wherever we go. And I have that same expectation for them the rest of this year because they, they certainly made it, um, you know, a great environment for us. I thought our players, you know, they came in with the right mentality. You know, we didn't play any music all week at practice, you know, for a reason. I told the players, hey, when I hear, I hear you singing on the sideline, I know we've done something right. Right. So those guys, you know, they brought the juice. And again, we didn't start off as fast as we wanted to. A little slow on D at times. Didn't give up a touchdown. Right. But a little slow on O with those three and outs. Once we got through that, you know, we kind of figured it out and settled in. Eric, you mentioned kind of the work this week, and I'm wondering, I guess, from last year, this year, if you changed how you're handling by weeks and how much of that is just going to be Washington, how much of that is working? Yeah, I mean, we, we've adjusted some things, but, you know, we have a plan in place. We'll, we'll work future opponents. We'll work, certainly, uh, Washington. You know, we got some good teams coming up, so we got to – and then we really got to self-scout ourselves, right? It's time to peel back the layers and figure out, okay, what do we have to do to be a dominant team moving forward? James, can you really set the tone and agenda after last week's game with so much going into it? Took a very different approach coming out of it. Now you're doing a bye week, so is Washington tough and being a big team tough. What do you want the tone? You talk about going to work this week. What, do, what is the message to the team where it's, it's going to be two weeks of build up to a top 10 game, one of the biggest games in the league, one of the biggest games of the season last year? What, what is the message? They play the game, not the occasion. It's no different than the other big games that we've been a part of. We're going to be a, a part of a lot more. It's about the 20-mile march consistently. On Monday, we can't go out there and march 60 miles. I right? will march 20 miles. We'll be consistent with our approach. Uh, find something that we can get better at. Aim small, miss small. Right? We're going to pick small details that we can improve schematically, individually for each person on our team. Um, and then we're going to try to figure out how to take away other team's strengths. Jared? Perch, two tackles for loss today, two sacks last week. I know you haven't watched film today, obviously, but just what have you seen from him, just like a physicality around the last two weeks? Yeah, I mean, he's a big man. He's hard to block, right? I mean, uh, we've got, you talk about differences in teams this year, last year. You know, one thing that we have is we have a front where we have guys that can roll and make an impact. And I think that makes it really hard to go play quarterback when you got somebody that you know is, you know, on your neck. And uh, he's, he's proven that he can be a guy that's like that. Two more here in the middle. How does the level of intensity change from, like, a super high-energy game last week with Colorado to a game like this week and then you got the bye week and then you go, obviously a big top 10 matchup after the bye week. How does that change? It's based on the maturity of your team. You know, I think we have a mature team. We have good leaders on this team. And again, it's about consistency, right? You can't let your highs get too high and your lows get too low. Um, you know, I think our guys understand the approach. They, they certainly understand the mission at hand. Last question, Eric. Two penalties today. I know that was kind of an issue or focal point the last three weeks. What, I guess what do you attribute that to? I guess in coverage in particular, how you guys stood up? I think our guys are tired of doing up downs. <laughs> That's probably what I would attribute it to, right? So we'll be doing less. All right, thank you, Coach. Appreciate you guys.